For this lecture, we're going to talk about tumors which are in kind of funny bones, not in the lung bones, and in some uh, strange places. So it's just kind of a random collection of some differentials and tumors which occur in strange places, which sometimes we can um, recognize. All right, so this is a radiograph the calcaneus, and there are two main calcaneal tumors you're going to see which occur in the anterior part of the calcaneus, right? So we'll just draw a line bisecting the calcaneus, and anterior is this half, and posterior is this half. And uh, when you see two lesions in the anterior part of the calcaneus, these lytic lesions that look like this, there's two main things you're going to think of. And one of them is going to be a solitary unicameral bone cyst. Uh, this is a, uh, a common place for them to occur. Uh, they're very distinct in their appearance. It's this very geographic lytic lesion with a narrow zone of transition in the anterior portion of the calcaneus. So a unicameral bone cyst is one thing you can think about. And an interosseous lipoma is another thing uh, to think about in this location. Sometimes you can't tell them apart. In the end, it doesn't really matter because they're both benign conditions. If you're really curious, uh, they can go on to advanced imaging. If you see fat in there on CT or MR, it's a lipoma. If there's fluid in there, uh, well, it's just a cyst. But it's really not necessary because both are benign uh, lesions in a way, and they're not going to do anything. So... Um, if you see something like this, most likely to be a unicameral bone cyst, it could still be an interosseous lipoma. Uh, interosseous lipomas tend to have this uh, central calcification in the middle of the cyst. This is a quite large one in this case. They're not always quite this big. Sometimes they're a little smaller. But if you see that, really, then there's just an interosseous lipoma, and you're done. Uh, if you don't see it, it could still be an interosseous lipoma, and you're stuck giving a differential. But it doesn't really matter because both things under differential are benign conditions. So. These uh, geographic lytic lesions in the anterior portion of the calcaneus, two main things, solitary or unicameral bone cyst, and the uh, second one is an interosseous lipoma. Occasionally, you can get faked out, and it's not really a lesion at all. You may see something that looks like this, uh, and it's going to be just uh, kind of a trick of the eye from the trabeculation pattern, which creates a pseudo lesion there. Um, that's easy to prove if you just get a different view or if they went to CT or something you'd see it's just uh, how the trabecular pattern goes around there creating this uh, optical illusion of a lytic lesion when there's none really there that's the third possibility but uh, again it's a benign thing so it doesn't really matter in that case it's not even anything um, so really think of a unicameral bone cyst or an interosseous lipoma and remember for interosseous lipomas they tend to have this central uh, calcification uh, this is uh, just to show you that you can get giant cell tumors uh, occurring in the ankle. Um, not the most common location for them. We tend to think of them in the lung bones uh, near the articular surface. Um, but they can occur in the calcaneus and they can occur in the talus in this case. So this is a geographic a lytic lesion, which we don't see very well in the radiograph. They go to MR and we nicely see the fluid, fluid levels in the lesion. Uh, and remember, uh, for your differential diagnosis of fluid, fluid levels, giant cell tumor is on that list. Could this be an aneurysmal bone cyst? Sure, you can have an aneurysmal bone cyst here as well, too. So you may be stuck between those two differentials in this case. Um, this one turned out to be a giant cell tumor. Um, if you just remember your differential diagnosis for uh, fluid fluid levels on MR are going to include uh, giant cell tumors, aneurysmal bone cysts, chondroblastomas, and a telangiectatic osteosarcoma. This one turned out to be a giant cell tumor. This is another example of a giant cell tumor occurring in the posterior portion of the calcaneus. So remember, uh, lesions in the anterior are going to be really your solitary bone cyst or your interosseous lipoma. Posteriorly, you can get uh, giant cell tumors. Uh, the apophysis here of the calcaneus is really an epiphyseal equivalent, so you can have giant cell tumors occurring there. Another fluid fluid level on the MR. Um, please look at the radiograph first before you make any um, definitive statements about this, but uh, it's a good location for a giant cell tumor. Could this be an aneurysmal bone cyst? Sure, it could still be an aneurysmal bone cyst in this case as well. All right, so we're going to move on to the sacrum now, uh, and a brief differential diagnosis of uh, common lytic lesions in the sacrum. Um, here we have this geographic uh, lytic lesion uh, taking up most of the mid portion of the sacrum. Uh, this one turned out to be a metastatic lesion. Uh, from a medulloblastoma of the brain. Uh, in this case, but metastatic lesions in general are going to be one of the lesions you're going to think about uh, which occur in the sacrum. Oftentimes, uh, sacral lesions are quite hard to see on the radiograph. You should really look for the accurate lines, make sure you're seeing them all. Uh, usually we see them better on CT. Um, so this is a metastatic lesion in this case, which is one of your differentials 
for uh, a sacral lesion. Here's another one. They all kind of look the same. Geographic lytic lesion, uh, taking up a large portion of the sacrum in this case. Um, really, you're going to just have to give a differential here. Um, we talked about METs are going to be one of the things that occur. Uh, plasma cytomas are going to be other things that uh, occur in that lesion. Chordomas are um, lesions which occur along the midline from the clivus all the way down the spine to the sacrum. Uh, and so uh, a frequent favorite location of a chordoma is in the sacrum. You can also get giant cell tumors in the sacrum as well too. Um, and chondrosarcomas can arise in the sacrum. This doesn't have any um, a chondroid matrix. This one turned out to be a giant cell tumor. Um, but you're probably stuck with a differential uh, in this case based on these one uh, on this one image. Uh, here's a radiograph showing you. Uh, you can see there's kind of like this density overlying the sacrum. You can't quite see the accurate lines. You wonder what kind of matrix is going on in here. They went on to advanced imaging. We can see this uh, lesion in the sacrum. It's got a soft tissue components expand out, expansile, and, and it's got some internal matrix within it. Uh, this one turned out to be a chordoma. Uh, in this case, uh, remember, chordomas tend to occur along the midline from clivus to the sacrum. They can occur in the vertebral bodies as well, too, but the sacrum is a favorite spot. Um, chondrosarcoma, I think, would be a good differential for this if you think this is some chondroid matrix. Um, this one turned out to be a chordoma, but chondrosarcomas also occur on the midline of the sacrum. This is a chondrosarcoma not off the sacrum, just off the iliac wing, but just to show you the, uh, the chondroid matrix uh, uh, and the soft tissue mass arising um, from this very aggressive appearing lesion off the iliac wing. And chondrosarcomas are another one that can occur in the uh, sacrum. So here's your differential um, for sacral lesions. So things to think about, um, chordomas, uh, certainly uh, they're rare tumors, but they like to occur in the sacrum. Chondrosarcomas are less rare. Uh, giant cell tumors can occur in the sacrum. Again, uh, not the most common location for them, but it is a possibility. METs and uh, plasma cytoma or multiple myeloma, remember, by far and away, the most common tumors you're going to see, so please consider those. So uh, METs, uh, plasma cytoma, or multiple myeloma, and then the other three, chordoma, chondrosarcoma, and giant cell tumor. If you really see nicely, um, nice cartilaginous matrix in there, it should probably push you towards a chondrosarcoma, but it's uh, not necessarily definitive. All right, next we're going to talk about a brief differential for vertebral plantar deformity. Uh, a radiograph which shows the vertebral body here, which is uh, nearly completely flattened, and there's focal kyphosis here. So uh, a nice example of a vertebra plana, and there is a kind of classic differential diagnosis for a vertebra plana. This one, in this case, was multiple myeloma, which is one of them on your list for uh, differentials. Uh, this is an MR in a child, showing you again what vertebral plana looks like. This is just a nice example on MR, showing you that this vertebral body is uh, nearly completely collapsed and flattened. Uh, and in a child, when you see this, you should think about EG or Langerhans cell histocytosis. And that's going to be your number one and your number two and your number three choices, just because it's much more common in a kid. But please don't say that in an adult. In an adult, uh, you shouldn't really consider uh, EG. Or in younger adults, okay, but uh, once they're over the age of... Uh, 30 or so, it's very unlikely to happen. Uh, EG is uh, found in children and uh, young adults. Um, all right, so this is a differential um, for a vertebra plana, kind of a basic standard differential. Um, Mets and multiple myeloma. Mets, multiple myeloma, remember, super common. Things you're going to see more often. So uh, this is a different case on the left here from a breast cancer metastasis causing a vertebra plana deformity. And we saw the case of multiple myeloma. Lymphoma is another common thing that can uh, cause this appearance as well, too, so that should be on your list. Um, in children or young adults, you're going to think of EG or Langerhans cell histiocytosis. And other things, certainly tra trauma, uh, they can have just collapse of vertebral body, usually in very osteopenic individuals. Uh, and then infection, such as tuberculosis, would be one thing to consider, which could cause collapse of the vertebral body. So... Just a, a standard differential for vertebra plane, a METS, multiple myeloma, lymphoma, traumatic collapse, uh, infectious processes, and, and think of tuberculosis, um, though it doesn't have to be. And uh, in the kids or young adults, uh, think of EG. Okay, just strange lesions of the, um, the scapula. Here we see this uh, 
sclerotic lesion arising from the scapula right here. This one turned out to be an osteosarcoma. This is a strange place for an osteosarcoma, uh, but they can occur there. This fracture was incidental. Um, chondrosarcomas are, are the lesions that can occur off the scapula and are not uncommon. Again, remember METS, multimyeloma, plasma cytoma. And uh, osteochondromas are another lesion that can occur off the scapula. This was an osteochondroma. Uh, this is a pedunculated osteochondroma arising from the, the uh, scapula here. When you describe osteochondromas, really what you want to look for is making sure they're in continuity with the cortex and the underlying marrow of the bone. That's really going to help you make the differential or make the diagnosis. Uh, and then on the CT or MR, you can look for, see if they have any significant cartilaginous cap. Once it starts to grow, particularly greater than two centimeters, you're going to worry about an osteochondroma uh, that's undergone malignant degeneration. So um, this was a person who had multiple hereditary exostosis. They're more likely to undergo malignant degeneration. And the ones that are more likely to undergo malignant degenerations are going to be the more centrally located ones. So ones rising in the pelvis or ones coming off the scapula, for example. This was a perfectly benign one, but just an example of an osteochondroma off of the scapula. Um, this is a, another nice classic differential diagnosis of a uh, very dense vertebral body. And this is what we call an ivory vertebral body. Um, and so as a nice short differential for an ivory vertebral body, things to think about are, uh, again, metastasis, super common, lymphoma, fairly common. Um, Paget's disease will give you an ivory vertebral body too, but one thing that will help you distinguish Paget's disease from some of the other things is that Paget's disease tends to expand the vertebral body. Um, it doesn't have to, uh, not all the time, but certainly look for the expansion. If you see a vertebral body which is expanded, really it's going to push you to think more of Paget's than some of the other things. Um, TB or uh, indolent uh, slow-growing infection um, can uh, cause this uh, appearance as well. So short differential diagnosis for an ivory vertebral body. All right, we're going to move on to lesions that occur in the spine uh, and the vertebral bodies. Um, that are not ivory uh, in this case. These are really all expansile lytic lesions of some degree. And um, there's a, a short differential of common things that are going to do it. This is not an exhaustive uh, list I'm going to give you, but just uh, common things to think of, uh, which are more likely to be right than wrong. Um, here we see an expansile lytic lesion, which is involving the dens. Uh, here it is on the axial plane right here. It's got a narrow zone of transition. Um, there's no periosteal reaction with this one. It's thin the cortex out remarkably. You go to MR, there's some fluid fluid levels on MR. Uh, this was an aneurysmal bone cyst. Um, it's uh, not uncommon for aneurysmal bone cysts to occur within the spine uh, or, or the vertebral body or the posterior elements of the vertebral body. This one's actually in the body itself. Um, so a good place uh, for an aneurysmal bone cyst, especially in a younger patient as this uh, patient was. Uh, this was a, not a lytic lesion in this case, but just to show you that osteochondromas can occur in the spine and the vertebral bodies as well. <clears throat> Bad place for an osteochondroma, as you can imagine. Here you see this exostosis. It's in continuity with the marrow and the cortex, extending into the vertebral canal. Uh, quite uh, uh, quite uh, um, extensive here on the uh, sagittal plane. We see it, you can imagine the cord is not quite so happy. It's just shift over here. And this, this was a child and they had multiple hereditary exostosis, and they had this lesion. They've had some surgical resection back here from prior treatment, um, and this was causing um, neurological symptoms. Um, so not a common place for um, osteochondromas, but they can occur there. We saw the one on the scapula, just to show you that. This was a chondrosarcoma occurring off the vertebral body. This was a patient who also had multiple hereditary exostosis, and this one underwent malignant degeneration. So this started off as an osteochondroma um, arising from the vertebral body or the rib. Uh, it's not exactly clear um, now where it came from just because it's so effusive. We can see on this lateral radiograph just this massive uh, calcified mass arising from the vertebral body, and there's a large soft tissue component and it's eroded or involved the uh, vertebral body in the rib. And this was a uh, chondrosarcoma from malignant degeneration of an osteochondroma involving the vertebral body in the adjacent rib. Okay, moving on. Uh, other common things to, to think of in the spine are um, osteoblastomas. We talked about osteoblastomas in a prior lecture. 
Uh, these are um, fairly rare tumors, but if you're going to see them, you're more likely to see them in the spine. And here we have this expansile lytic lesion with this internal matrix uh, kind of involving the pedicle uh, of the uh, vertebral body here. You can see it on the sagittal view. And it slightly expanded the vertebral or the neural foramen here as well. Um, so this is a good location appearance for an osteoblastoma, uh, especially in a younger patient as this patient was. So this is what they look like in the spine. The matrix can look very confusing uh, sometimes. It can look chondroid-like and look osteoid-like. Uh, they can be very locally aggressive at times, but they're, they're still a benign tumor. So if you see uh, expansile lesion in the spine with some matrix in it, uh, osteoblastoma is one of the things that you should put at the top of your list in a, in a younger patient especially. Aneurysmal bone cysts, for example, uh, they tend not to have as much matrix in them as, as well as giant cell tumors tend not to have as much matrix in them possible, but uh, probably wouldn't put those as first choices. So because of the matrix uh, and the location, osteoblastoma would be a good choice for this one. This was another aneurysm bone cyst of the uh, spine, the lumbar spine, and this geographic lytic lesion extending into the posterior elements. Here we see it uh, involving the vertebral body and going into the posterior elements. ABC, giant cell tumors can occur in the spine too, uh, and so that would be a good thought in this case. Osteoblastoma would be another good thought as well here. We don't see any matrix, but still possible. Um, in the older adult, again, uh, METS and multiple myeloma are going to... Uh, should be at the uh, uh, forefront of your uh, thinking. But this was a younger patient, and this was a benign aneurysm bone cyst. This was a radiograph. Uh, a patient who's older, you can tell their spine's not quite so happy. It's been around the block a little bit. And we have this lytic uh, lesion involving the vertebral body right here. Uh, we'll get a better shot of it on the CT. It shows this uh, lytic lesion. Most of the vertebral body is just taken up by this lytic process. Uh, so we see an older patient, we see this uh, lytic lesion is thin to maybe destroy part of the cortex or the end plate of the vertebral body here. We're going to worry about this and we're going to think METS or multiple myeloma because of their age and because of just how common they are. Uh, and we can see here, here's the CT, so they had a giant renal mass. In this case, this was a renal cell carcinoma. And here's the axial CT showing the lesion right here as well. And if you remember, uh, renal cell carcinoma and thyroid carcinoma are um, the two that tend to, uh, or the typical ones that give you expansile lytic metastasis. Not exhaustive, other things can do it, but uh, I'd like you to think of those two as a prototypical of a lytic expansile metastasis. So things in the spine, METS, multiple myeloma in an older adult, just uh, think of those just because they're so common. Okay, this was a, another aneurysm bone cyst in this case. Uh, which extended from the uh, vertebral body into the posterior elements. A uh, nice example on the sagittal CT and on the MR, which uh, on the MR, you know, it's hard to say anything smart about it. You're just going off its location. You don't see any fluid fluid levels here to tip you to an ABC or a giant cell tumor, but this one ended up being uh, another angel of bone cyst. This is just the axial showing you the uh, same thing. <clears throat> this is an example of a giant cell tumor in this case. Uh, lytic lesion involving uh, C2 right here. You don't see it very well on the radiograph. You see it a little better on the CT. This one may have some flux of internal matrix in it. Uh, I think, again, osteoblastoma would be a good thought here. Um, but giant cell tumors uh, are found in the uh, vertebral bodies, and this one ended up being a giant cell tumor. ABC you could consider as well, too. It's not incredibly expansive, but still uh, reasonable to consider. And remember, in somebody older, they look a little older. Uh, met some multiple myeloma, but in this case, this one turned it out, uh, ended up being a giant cell tumor. All right, so common things I want you to think about for spine lesions, uh, aneurysmal bone cysts, giant cell tumors, osteoblastoma, and in older adults, METS and multiple myeloma. Now, this is not an exhaustive list. Uh, there are other things that can do it, but these are common things that can do it. I showed you the chondrosarcoma and the osteochondroma in multiple hereditary exostosis. Those are pretty rare. Uh, and they have a more typical appearance. So some of these more kind of lytic expansile lesions, uh, these are a good bet uh, to consider for your differential diagnosis. Uh, you're going to use age to help you a little bit. Younger patient, ABC or osteoblastoma, um, uh, they're more likely an older patient met multiple myeloma.